Let us. Dear participants, build up a model of Rome. A model of cholera. Okay, so let's steal ourselves to the task and I will take Mod Data Station. Okay, um, so first of all, we're going to get down to business by closing this model. We're gonna go file and confident that it can always be retrieved, we're going to say file close all and it will close out that model despite the many virtues that recommend it. Okay. Now we will build up our first little model. Uh, so to do that, um, I'm going to go to the file menu and I'll say new model. Okay. And this model will be called um, uh, smoking and heart disease V1. V1 meaning version one, okay? And what's critical is that you take note of and um, exercise judicial on the model time units. I would argue that for dealing with matters of modeling heart disease, seconds are not the most conducive time unit for, for uh, understanding. We're gonna change the seconds there to be years, okay, years. So the value one for a time, 1.0 time will mean one year, not one second, okay? The last model we were dealing with, the time unit was actually hours. This one, it's gonna be years. We choose our time unit to be a sensible one to facilitate our reasoning. But here's the thing, for all these models, time is actually continuous. What I mean by that is, it's not like it's jumping from time to time in some crude way, you know, from one year to the next, to the next, to the next. It's not like that at all. It actually goes as, it simulates as fine brain as it needs to, or or jumps to the next event if it's if it's coarser um, in time. Um, it's but it's it's in continuous time. It's not dividing time up into time steps. But there is a time unit, which is kind of our meter meter stick, or for our US colleagues, our yardstick for measuring time. It's our communion measure for telling us what one means in terms of time. Uh, if we talk about a timeout, if they stay immune for 20 days or for 60 days, exactly. Um, 60 would be, for this model, if I said 60 as a time, it would be 60 years. For that earlier model, it would be 60 hours, et cetera. Okay, so we chose years, and I'm going to say finish here, okay? There we go. Okay, TA, stand stalwart, stand ready. Ready yourselves for deployment. Okay, there we go. Okay, um, so here's our smart smoking and heart disease one. Now, we want to build up this model like the other one in a way that incorporates a bunch of basic features of age-based model. We spoke about them from this podium prior to lunch. Um, uh, but I fear that perhaps the um, the unsalubrious nature of the environment and lunch might have uh, discharged such memories from your recent mind or your such recent memories from your mind. So I'm going to be reminding you that when we have HMS models, we have assumptions about the model characterized by parameters. We have state captured in the model, often in a theory of say personhood, uh, or if it's a model of veterans and service dogs, a theory of personhood and a theory of, of, of canine existence. Um, 
And then we have um, changes in that state over time encoded by rules and means of interaction. So let's, let's uh, press ourselves to this task. So we're gonna add a theory of personhood to this model. We're gonna be simulating heart disease and smoking for people. So we're going to go and we're going to say, right click on the model and say new, but instead of saying model, we'll say agent type, okay? Here we go, agent type. And the agent type will be person, capital P. This is gonna be our cookie cutter shape, our template for a person. It's gonna be kind of our theory of, it's gonna encode our theory of personhood and then we're going to create many people subject to that theory of person. It's a whole population. So what did I do? Let me make sure we went through this. I, I right clicked here. I said new agent type, and I'm going to type person, and then I'm going to type finish. Okay, there we go. Here's a person. So we have a theory of person, but it's a particularly impoverished theory at the moment. It's it's kind of vacuous sometimes. Right click here on person and we'll see that it's blank slate. Um, so I'm gonna go to the palette and I'm going to drag in from the palette in presentation an oval. Ladies and gentlemen. An oval. Okay, now. Where did I go? I went to the palette. I went to the presentation palette. It's beneath the Da Vinci and logo of the agent that we explored before. Uh, it's the presentation here at the palette. And I, I selected a, an oval and I dragged it in. And I'm going to shrink it down to be smaller and situated at this crossroads to, to make sure its visual position is the same as its logical. Notice I'm doing, this is very important. And in fact, it's a general principle. Be careful when you're gonna add things. Are you adding them to the right area of the model? Here I'm adding it to person, capital P. Not just anywhere in the palette of anything. I'm not adding it to main. I'm adding it to person, to the theory of personhood. We want the theory of personhood such that it gives them a face upon the world in the form of, a, of an open. Modest though it is, it'll be a start. Later, we'll avail ourselves of more anthropomorphic visualizations of people. Okay, um, so here, here's our oval. Are we okay with this? TA, stand ready. You know, people may need you. Who needs help online? The TAs are ready for deployment. Does anyone need help in the room? They stand ready. The vanguard is strong. And under critical points, they can form a phalanx to dispatch problems with some alacrity. Okay, so so we go to person and we added an, a, uh, an oval. Do we see that? Okay, so we've described our theory of personhood, which is, well, what it lacks in richness, it makes up for in simplicity. Okay, so we have uh, we have people having a face upon the world. I'd like now to go do something that builds on this. So we have a theory of personhood that's very elemental, let's say. We want to go now, remember this provides kind of a cookie cutter, kind of a template for particular people. They all have to accord with this theory of personhood, which is sim simple, austere. So now let's go over to projects and we're going to add a population of people. And, and we're gonna be elaborating this theory of personhood for this population over time. But right now we'll, we'll start simple. So we're gonna, we're gonna to go to main, double click on main or you can click up here. Okay, um, to make sure you're in the main part of the canvas. In other words, not for person, but for main. Okay. Okay. And now we are going to create a population of people. 
to do this, I will go here, click in the projects area on person, and I will drag yonder into this canvas. Okay, there we go. I'm dragging. And I will type population like that. Now, if, if, if you didn't do that right, if you, if you had problems and you couldn't type it, once you select this, you'll notice that over here, you can type the name population. So if you didn't quite type it out while it was there, you can type it over here. As long as this is selected, it will show up in properties and you can type out population. Can you see that right now? Do people online need help? Does anyone in the room need help? Hmm? Okay. Okay. Oh, um, okay. Sala, was that a thumbs up? Preston, okay. Um, okay, now, this is actually not yet a population. I'm kind of tricking you right now. It says the name is population, but that doesn't the name doesn't make it anything. It doesn't render it automatically. Thank you, uh, Sala. Uh, population. Instead, we have to say population of agents here. And we're going to make it initially 100 agents. Okay. There we go. 100 agents. Okay. So there's going to be 100 agents in this population, each described by the theory of personhood, articulated by the person, as we say, class, capital P person. And right now, it, it's, it's, it's elemental. It consists only of this oval. Okay? Okay, but this is enough to run the model. It's a singularly austere model that makes no assumptions about dynamics right now, but it is runnable. You know, simply static assumptions. So let's take this model, save early, save often with control S, or you can use this to save um, this, this uh, button up here, save model. But I'm going to right click on simulation and I'm going to run, say run. Okay. And here we go. And it's running. Where is the population? Well, they're all stacked up atop each other in a most sort of unseemly crowded situation in where this oval is. You could see there are 100 of them. I can go down and I can look at each person. Person zero, person one, person two. They all look alike because they all have just the same oval that encodes them. It is a singularly homogenous population sweeping forward in time without any change because their existence is confined to an oval. Okay? Okay, but we have a runnable model. Now let's do something a little bit richer. If we may. And, and this, for now, it's gonna be visual. It'll just connote, it'll be notional. It'll sort of visually connote something. Uh, later, it will actually have a big impact um, for some later models. So I'm going to take this person, and we're going to distribute them um, across the space. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna scatter them across the space. Now, there's two ways we can do this. One is easily selectable visually. It's easy to do, and I'm going to teach that way first. Later, pretty soon, we'll come to the other one uh, in a different model. But I'm going to go to Maine because these people, this population lives in Maine. Okay? Lives in Maine. I'm going to go to Maine, and I'm going to go to Space and Network. Okay? Space and Network here. So where is that? If I go to Maine... Show the properties for main and go down to the space and network area. And I'd like you to change layout type to be random. Okay, it's good to know that it facilitates this. 
quite easy to actually do this in a more general way, but but it's it's useful to know that it will lay it out visually for you using a set of possible ways. It can put them in a ring. It can put them in an arranged fashion, regularly spaced out, etc. We're going to say random. Um, in this case, it's not going to make a difference. It'll just illustrate. So I'm running it now, having done that, and there we go. Okay. So what is shown? What is this oval represent, or this one, or this one? Can anyone say? What do What do each of those ovals represent? They represent a what? A person. Each of these ovals represents a person. Right now, there's no rhyme or reason for why they're located. It's not like their their income dictates their location or their age. Nor does it have any bearing on their evolution. In fact, there's no evolution at all with this model. There's no theory of change over time. There are no actions to change their state. Do you recognize that? Mm hmm? Okay. So... Here, it's a very simple model, but we're building skills that will become more useful as we elaborate this model. Okay. Um, does anyone want me to post this model now? You know, where we've gotten to. I could post it to the, um, to, to the uh, area where we share models. Uh, would anyone like that for me to post it? This is kind of version one. Are we okay going on? Anyone? No? Okay, so we'll, we'll go on. Okay, next. What I'd like to do now is to go and start to add something richer to this, okay? Um, so we're going to go to the theory of personhood and we're going to elaborate that theory, okay? And elaborate it with some simple things. But actually, to teach a more basic lesson, I'm going to elaborate that theory. But first, I want to give the model some requisite variability because we've kind of done a disservice. Let's go back to Maine. I'm sorry. I, I want to teach a lesson that will be helpful. Um, if we go to Maine and we go on population, you'll notice that right now, we have a fixed population size. What is that population size? 100. We want to change that. How do we, how do we encode assumptions here? I, I spoke about it earlier. Remember? There are things called, it begins with P, parameters. Parameters. So we're going to use a parameter. That encodes in assumptions, and it communicates it if, if you put a parameter in a given thing, say in main, it will encode that assumption and it will communicate it from where main is created, which is in a scenario to main itself. If you put a parameter in an agent like person, it will communicate the assumptions to that person from where they're created, which is in a population. Or if they're created dynamically, you'll specify it there. Okay, so, so we're going to Instead of hard coding this, we'll encode a parameter. So we're going to go to the palette. We're still at main here, and we're going to put in a parameter. So click, click on this agent, and we're going to agent palette, and we're going to drag in parameter. There we are. Remember that sort of pie slice thing? So I dragged it in. How did I do that? Well, in case anyone uh, attention got away from you. I went to the palette, I have main up here, and I click on this, I, I went to the agent palette, and I click on parameter, and I drag it over like that. And, and ideally, I, I put a name to it, like population size, with a capital S, but um, maybe I forget, maybe I somehow don't type it properly. I can always do it over here, population. I want to give you some requisite flexibility, populations. Okay. Now, we're going to use parameters a lot, and rightly so. They encode our assumptions. They allow us to modify those assumptions for different scenarios or to allow for capturing heterogeneity in the population, differences between people. 
So I want to explicate something. So this is a population, a, a parameter. And you'll notice that one of the things we have to choose is its type. See, it says type and it says double. A double basically means kind of a, what's called a floating point type, kind of a, a value that allows partial quantities. Um, it's a, it's approximates a real number or, um, uh, in any case, it, it has a type here. And double is not what we want because we don't want to say, well, there's partial people. Instead, we want it to be a count. And to be a count, we want it to be an integer. So what do we do? We're, make sure you're selecting population size, for the parameter, and select int. It's a count. It's an integer. And by default, if we don't specify an alternative, it'll be 100. By default, it'll be 100. Okay. But this parameter will encode an assumption. And we specify that assumption. The point where main is created, this is lucid main parameter, which is in the scenario. So in different scenarios, we could have different assumptions. Okay, so I'm saying we have a population size by default if we don't override it in a scenario of 100. By default, it will, for a scenario, make it 100 unless we say otherwise. Okay, but this, set, this calls it population size, but is it really, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I beseech you, is it in fact a the population size? Is it operationalized as the population size right now? No, what do we have to do to make it the population size? To make it actionable as the population size? We, connect it to the population. we have to connect it to the population because right now population still says a hundred. Hmm? So we need to we need it to refer to this population size. So I'm gonna go there and I'm going to say population, but this is where the autocomplete is your friend. So if you're using a Windows machine or a Linux machine, you'll do control space and you'll see it try to propose choices for you, which is the one that we want. Can anyone say? Well, the first for all things. Okay, so we'll say populations. It will fill us out for you. On a Mac, Someone besides Wade will have to say, what is it on a Mac? Thanks. Command space. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, every boot camp that goes into my ear, every boot camp that goes out of my ear. Um, uh, option space, alt space, command space. I'm, I'm innocent of that on the Mac side. Okay, so we're having population sizes different population. So what this did is actualize that it is in fact our population size. We realize that it's our population size. Are we okay with this? Okay, let's let's try this. Let's let's I told you this parameter lives in main. So what dictates the actual assumption we want to use when we run the model for this parameter? Where is it the assumption about it dictated? It's dictated where? It's dictated in the, begins with S. The next letter is C. The last letter is O. It has an R in it. Scenario, Scenario. thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I should get a hangman or something. Um, okay, so we're going to, first of all, we'll run, oh, we'll, we'll go to simulation. We won't run it yet. Don't go to that that uh, scenario. And you'll notice now in the parameters area for the scenario, for this particular so-called experiment, do you see there's an assumption about population size? Where did it get this 100? Anyone? That was the what? D d d d d d <laughs> Default value, thank you. Um, okay. Um, so if we ran it, we'd see the same thing we did before, broadly speaking, you know, within the realm of 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 um uh actually it's not even stochastic right now okay um now we're going to create a new scenario right click on the model we'll say new 
experiment. They call it an experiment. I, I don't like the word experiment because experiment in the health sciences has a very specific set of meetings and a set of historical, you know, historically um, concerning overtones that one has to be very, very careful with. But I'm going to call this this scenario. Uh, I'm going to call it population population a thousand. <laughs> what it lacks in richness, it makes up for in brevity. Okay. Um, so how big do you think the population will be here? Because Sorry. Currently 100. Oh, yes, I'm saying how how big do you think we want it to be? <laughs> if the scenario is called population 1,000? Yes, we want it to be 1,000. So go fill it in for 1,000. We are saying for this scenario, we're assuming the population size is 1,000. Do you see that? So each scenario, because the parameter lives in Maine, it's cre Maine is created by scenarios. So the scenarios get to specify the assumptions that live in Maine, okay? The assumptions about the parameters that live in Maine. And this holds true if you have a theory of personhood and each person has a immigration status. That is specified where those people are created, which is in a, the appropriate population. Okay. Um, or where they're done in a Okay, so let's run it. Let's run a population size of thousand. What do you think we'll see with population size of thousand? How will it be different? Anyone? Circles. There's ten times as many circles. Yeah, and here we go. There we go. Right. Poisson process. Poisson spatial process. Okay. Okay. We taught about parameters here. Parameters everywhere. We're going to use them a huge amount. But for now, we're going to focus on a different field. We're going to focus on giving some dynamics to the situation because it's still a static model. It's full of sound and fury at the initial time, but then it doesn't change at all. Do you agree? Okay, so let's give it some dynamics. Let's give, let's put the dynamic in dynamic modeling with your lead. Okay. So hearing no objections, I'm going to go to person. And does anyone want me to save this and distribute it? Okay. Okay. So um, we're going to be doing that shortly. First, I want to put in here a state chart. Okay. And specifically, um, we're going to put in a state chart. You notice this model is about smoking and heart disease. We're first going to put in a heart disease state chart. Okay. Here we go. We're going to drag in from the palette. Sorry, I went to the palette. I went to agent and I went to state chart area of the agent palette. And I dragged in what's called a state chart entry point. And this is going to be the heart disease state chart and i'm gonna move it around a little bit more just to give it a bit of space because we're gonna have the smoking state chart all the time there we go okay so we added a entry point that indicates where we're gonna start and i'm gonna drag in a state and we're gonna call this the healthy heart state Okay. 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 And now we are going to add to this a another state called heart disease. Okay. Sorry, zoom in. Sure. It's a good idea. 
Be sad, burn up, or do you want more? Something like this. Is that better? Healthy heart, heart disease. But if we want people to be able to change status of heart disease, what do we need to do? At a transition. They need to develop heart disease from somewhere. And the only possibility once they could develop it is from the start or from healthy heart. We're gonna, for now, just, just have it from healthy heart, okay? There we go, okay. Are we okay with that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we can run this model. And um, if you run it now, um, you won't be able to visually see anything, but you will, it will be evolving. So I'm going to, I'm gonna go save this. Um, as we'll see, you'll be evolving in a particularly simplistic way. I'm gonna go to the simulation. I'm gonna call this baseline, okay? Um, uh, the baseline simulation here, okay? There we go. And I'm calling this, this simulation baseline because it has only default assumptions. I'm going to right click on it and run. What did I do? I right clicked on it and ran run and did run. Okay. So I'm going to go here. And if we drill down, we're going to go look at the population. This population member, do they have a healthy heart or do they have heart disease? Anyone? Heart disease. How about this next person? Mm hmm. How about this next? Next, you're kind of getting the drift, ain't you? Okay, so what's the rule for this transition right now? It, it does say you can develop heart disease, but under what situation? Well, it's a time out of what? One year, yeah, we don't, we don't want that, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is to um, put in a value that's um, uh, that is somewhat more uh, realistic or or at least uh, less grossly off. So first of all, it's going to be a hazard rate, a, a chance per unit time. And it's going to be per year because that's our time unit. And here it's going to be point, I'll make it 0.01, okay? Okay. Um, some people will develop it um, a bit earlier in life, but you know, on average, it's going to take how long for them to develop it? This is 0.01. On average, it will take a century. Yeah, century. One over 0.01 um, years um, uh, uh, to develop it or, or a century on average. Okay. So we could run this and, and, and let's do that. Um, so I'm going to, to run it now with that assumption. And I could bring up the trusty developer panel and I could look, okay, so here's someone and they they haven't yet developed, they, they have a healthy heart. Here's another person. Here's someone who's developed heart disease. Here's someone who still has a uh, healthy heart, et cetera. Okay. Um, this is good. This is good. Um, and... I want to give this transition a name. So I'm going to call it developing heart disease, the transition itself. Okay. Um, you could call it heart disease incident. You could call it contracting heart disease. Give it a name, but it has to be all one word. So we often use this so called camel case, where we put upper and lower case to connote that it's, um, and to, to kind of parse it out. So you can kind of read it as separate words visually, but it's all one word. It has to be one word for for any logic, but it's actually the underlying language called Java for it to be happy. And we're going to click show name there. And it turns out that that's going to have two benefits. One thing is it will show the name, which is kind of good for a, well, it's good for a transparent model. But the second thing is it's actually going to report how long it will be till that fires for a transition like this. So, so I just 
click show name and I call that developing heart disease. And I'm going to right click on run or to bit on baseline and click run. And here we go. And I'll open up my developer panel again and I'll see. And I can see, oh, this person has, wow, if 200 years, so 73 years for this one. This one already developed heart disease. This one, eight years. Well, let's watch. Can we? Can we watch? What's going to happen soon? They're going to develop heart disease. Boom. Okay. They developed heart disease. Okay. Um, and so this transition is, is dictated by a draw from this exponential distribution. Um, the mean time will be 100 years. Alpha is 0.01. And... And so over time, people will develop heart disease. This person will develop it in about 20 more years. But I think you know the story there, right? Okay. Um, so we have some dynamics, but truth is we don't we don't really have a nice visual depiction of this. Maybe we visually depict it so we can see it. Visual depictions are more than eye candy in agent-based models. There's, there's a lot going on with HMS models. And often, remember, a, a model needs to invite critique. It needs to be transparent enough structurally to try to invite challenge and critique, to, to build understanding and invite, you know, knowledge, to pool knowledge from others. But also in terms of its behavior over runtime, you, you're trying to spot anomalies, things that just don't jive with your experience or what's plausible, and visualizations aid in that. Uh, visual depictions, outputs of various sorts, graphs, but also sort of visualizations of the running behavior. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go add a new type of construct. And this construct is epiphenomenal. It's not gonna affect the model, but it's gonna affect the appearance of the model. Mm. So we're going to add something that changes over time. We're going to add what's called a variable. So we're gonna to go to the palette. Well, yeah, I, I think we'll, after that, I'll, I'll post this model. So we're going to drag in, so we're going to the palette. We're in person still, not a main person. And we're gonna do something to change the color, particularly the border color of this here rectangle. So in the palette under agent, we're going to go to variable and we're going to drag in. There we go. Are we okay with that? And this is going to be called uh, boundary color. Now, I don't want to cause, cause an internecine war here. There's a question how we spell this. And I am going to, as a dual citizen, I am going to choose imperial spelling, C color. But I will not, I will not force that convention on our American esteemed American colleagues. So if they would like to call it color, they will have soon their revenge, as it turns out. Okay, okay. So we have boundary color. Okay, or as it were, color. Okay. Now, we have to choose the type of this, and this is where things get sticky. This is where the border rankles, um, because the type of this, the type of this is not a double, it's not a Boolean, it's not a person, it's not a string, it's a what? Color. Yes, and how is that spelt? Or as Americans would say, how is that spelled? Um, it's with a single O because this is dictates. This is dictated by the fact that Oracle Corporation, the owner of Java, is an American company, and therefore the spelling is dictated by the American hegemony. Um, anyway, <laughs> Alan Chest. Uh, the truth is, you have to be careful um, about uh, your naming consistently. As long as you're consistent about the naming, that that will be okay. But this is built into Java um, color, spelled that way. It's it's the color. So we're going to call this a boundary color initially. We will make it black. 
Hein? Ouais. Okay, so initially the boundary will be black. And we are good. We're going to go to this oval, if we could. And we're going to set it so that its color is dictated by this variable. Where do you think we would set it? Within its list of sub properties, um, which do you think it would might be associated with color? Appearance is right. Appearance. And you'll notice that you have a choice here statically. But if you click here, and this is important, um, you can click or where do you see this little drop down? You can click, and we're going to click under line color. I'm going to change its surrounds. You can click dynamic value. And then you can specify here boundary color or whatever spelling you used for this. Okay, boundary color. You could have used just without the U and you could have been just happy. And I'm gonna change the line width to be thicker. There we go. So we can really see that color. So what I'm saying is, hey, use this oval, but with the line color given by the, whatever we set to boundary color. Right now, this is a variable. So the job of a parameter is to encode assumptions and generally it's fixed. It doesn't change over time. The job of a variable is to vary. It's to change, or it's to encode values that change over time. The number of times I've been infected, how long I've been, a, a, how many pack years I've smelt, um, um, what's my color? In this case, boundary color, okay? So what did I did? I, I went here and I selected dynamic value. It, it, it turned into this little thing here and I said boundary color. Are we okay with that? Are we okay? Okay, so if we run the model now, what will we see? Can anyone say? What will we see? Okay, and 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 what color will they be? They'll all be, they'll all be black, right? The, the, here we go. The boundaries for all of them are black. But now let's let's, ladies and gentlemen, make a forward step. We're going to make that color dependent on their heart disease state. So we're going to go to we're going to teach an important lesson now. This is a, a, a quite important lesson. When we have so it's very common in in uh, agent based modeling to need to when something changes, when something happens, to undertake some action, to undertake some change. So when people enter the healthy heart state, we're going to set the boundary color variable that we created to green, okay? There we go, to the healthy heart state. And how are we going to do that? Well, click on the healthy heart state. This is in person. Click on the healthy heart state. And for entry action, make it, we're going to put in a bit of code. We're going to put in a bit of a fragment of code. Are we ready? Steal yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. So in the healthy heart state, in the entry action, when we come into the state, we will set our boundary color. And by the way, use autocomplete boundary color. It knows it, it can only find one, so it fills it out. Control space or command space for Mac. Okay. Okay. Um, so my alpha for remembering that is about, I think one over alpha is like one day or something. <laughs> okay. Okay. So boundary color equals. And we're going to set it to green. Are we okay with that? Does anyone disagree? Okay. No one is. No one is throwing a. A fit. And now we need to do something. And this is going to be an important lesson. I'm going to about to teach. This is going to be an important rule of thumb. You're going to use again and again. This is a command. This is saying make this happen. 
do this. Set the boundary color equal to this. We're not just saying, you know, we're not just giving a formula that computes a value. You know, saying 1.0 divided by 60 times 24, something like that. No, no, no. Here we're actually telling it, do this thing. Set the value of the variable boundary color to be green. So we need a semicolon. You can think of it morally as kind of a excavation point. Do this thing. It's like a command. It's like a imperative. Do it. Set the boundary color equal to green. So we need a semicolon. A semicolon for those who, in case there's any uncertainty, is this sort of thing, right? And if it, it has kind of a comma like thing down here, right? It's it's one of the main keys on your keyboard near the return key, like thing. Okay. Um, okay. So that's what we're going to do here. And then for heart disease, so we can copy this if we want to. I'm, I'm selecting it and I'm copying. I can copy by doing control C. On Mac, it is what? Command C, is it? Okay, well, no? Yes. Command C, okay. So I'm selecting this alternative. You can select it and say copy, right click and copy, or you can do edit and mumble. Um, okay. Now we're gonna go to heart disease state and there we're gonna set the boundary color to be red. Are we okay with that? We're gonna set them to be red when they develop heart disease. So what are we gonna see now? We run the model. Notice this is still a semicolon there. And I set it for the heart disease state to have this boundary color. So what are we gonna see when we run this model? Anyone say? Good. And they become red because they are what? Red. Developing heart disease, that's right. No, exactly. Okay, so we're gonna run it. Here we go. Let's let's run our theory. Here they are. They're starting without heart disease. And here folks are turning red because they're developing. Say it one more time, each yeah. Good, 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 good. They're developing heart disease. Okay, good. Well, it's not good they're developing heart disease, but it's good that you described it. Okay. So now all of them developed heart disease, right? Okay. By the way, what would have happened if we had kept this as a, as a, um, so, so here on average, they develop it in, uh, in a hundred years, right? One divided by 0.01, right? This, on average, they develop it in a hundred years. If you have a value alpha, the mean time to leave is one over alpha. Alpha here is 0.01. It's the mean time to leave is is 100 years. What if this were a what if this were a timeout with value 100 years? What would have happened then? What would we see? We'd see, sorry. What what would we see? At 100 years all of them change. Notice no one's changing now. Still no one's changing. Time units one year. This is 45, 46, 50 years have passed, 56. When are they going to change? All change in 100 years, right? Here we go. Here we go. You ready? That's the most unsalubrious prospect for the healthcare system. No, that's for sure. Um, so we're going to change this back to be a rate transition. I want to draw your attention to the fact a rate transition is memoryless. If this is constant, it doesn't care how long you've been in that state. Your chance of still being in the state goes down like this, but your chance of leaving the state, if you are still in it per unit time, is completely fixed at that value, 0 0.01 per year. As long as you remain in that state, your chance of leaving in the next year is basically 0.01. Um, I say basically because it's, it's compounded, but. Um, uh, but basically, it's, it's constant. Um, it, it's memoryless. It doesn't matter how long you've been there. It's the same chance of leaving. By contrast, if so, so on average, you will leave in in a hundred years, perhaps. Um, but but that's 
you know, after 100 years, you're no more likely to leave per year than before. By contrast, a timeout transition, what does that look like over time? Anyone? What, what would it look like for a timeout transition um, in terms of your probability, um, probability of remaining uh, in this state? That function. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, prob um, remain in state, the probability of remaining in the state, okay? Um, it's one at the initial time, and then it decreases over time, right? With a mean time of one over alpha. For the exponential, so this is exponential distribution in blue. And um, uh, so the residence time is exponentially distributed. Um, by contrast, for a timeout, it's going to be, as Jared said, a step function. Up to time 100, it'll, your probability of remaining in the state is what? One. 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 Sorry? Sorry? Oh, the camera. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, so, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, is, that, is it in there now? Okay. Ah, uh, thanks super much. That's super helpful. So for a timeout transition, it's one for remaining up until that time. And then what is it after that? What's the probability of remaining after time 100? Zero. And then it's it's zero ever after, right? Now, the probability of, of leaving for the next little bit, the next, say, say next year, um, for a rate transition, 0.01, is, is the same no matter how long you've been there you leaving per unit time for the next year. But for a timeout transition, what is the chance of leaving in the first year? The very first year you've been there. Zero, 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 zero. And you kind of get the point until what time? Time 100, in which case, it, conceptually, it's, it's infinite, right? You, you're going to leave now, and you're going to leave in the next microsecond, and then, so this is what's called direct delta function. It's, it's an impulse function. And then a chance of leaving after. This is totally memory full. Blue, totally memoryless. It doesn't care how long you've been there. You know, it doesn't, your chance of leaving the next unit time is the same, 0.01 for the next year. Uh, for a timeout transition, it's totally memory full. Your chance of leaving depends entirely on how long you've been there. You're going to leave exactly after 100 years. Do you get that? Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. These have the same average, but they're quite different in terms of their implications. And you saw that writ large when we ran it, right? In one case, over time, some people changed, some people changed. Um, the other one went to time 100. No one developed heart disease, and then boom, everyone developed it. Very different implications for care seeking, that's for sure. Okay. Okay. So so here we have this sort of disease. But our task is not yet complete. But I'm gonna declare this version one, and I'm going to post this um to the uh site um just to make sure everyone enjoys recourse to uh to this. So this is gonna be under models built in class, and I'm going to post. Oh, no, 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 post a file, and we will have to go, um, um, I think it's going to be in, no, 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 it's going to be in my models, um, I guess it will be in here, uh, mumble, 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 um, okay, uh, someone, someone's someone got to direct me, where where can I find models on this, um, uh, can someone help me, folks, help your professor, Model built class. Uh, okay, yeah, but but where on the where on this local local file system? Um, I think it's 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 got to be under like. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Here, here, I'll I'll go check here. This is the easiest way to do it. Come on, dependencies. Oh, come on. Uh, advanced. It, it'll be under this thing here. Okay, NDO eight eight users NDO eight eight five. Oh, come on. Okay. Okay, so I would have thought that would be under my home, 
but I just don't see it under home. So like, what's going on? Um, okay, so so I guess I'll just have to enter this path. Um, but but I mean, surely there's a better way to navigate to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, come on. Oh, gosh, that's horrible. That's just like torture. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Like, this is like, yeah, this is like, this is horrible. Oh, my gosh. This is, <laughs> it's like, oh, that's so hideous. That is heinous. Um, there's got to be a better one. It's got to be a better way to navigate to that. Um, could, could one of the TAs look into this? And find a better way because that that's quite hideous and uh, i don't want to do that every time i have to figure out uh last year we had them all nicely available but apologies for how long that took but we'll find a better way to do that there should be some sort of way to to make this context menu um have frequent things or for it to be available under home i would i would think it should be under home maybe it's under documents but i don't see it under documents it's really anyway anyway someone so maybe someone can figure out some way to make an easy shortcut whatever okay anyway apologies for that but now that we've posted that um you folks can use it but let's go to the next stage okay so next we're going to add a smoking state chart okay so here we go um uh, okay, so I, I cannot believe that that's like the acceptable way to do it. That's in my view, that's totally outrageous. Um, okay, so uh, here we're going to have a smoking state chart, okay? Um, and it'll be called smoke. Oh, sorry. So, what did I do? I'm sorry, I wasn't I wasn't being careful enough for you, and I apologize for that. I was I was dwelling too much on that trauma. Okay, so we go over to the palette, we go down to agent, we go to state chart entry point, and we're gonna drag it in here, and it's going to be called smoking state chart. So smoking state chart. Okay, there we go. Okay, and this is gonna consist of a theory of smoking. And this theory of smoking will be simple, but to the point. So we're going to have three distinctions. One, and this is in accordance with common models that I and others have published. We're going to drag in a state, make sure it connects with this, make sure it's it's properly connected. Um, and this state is going to be called never smoker. Mm -hmm. Are we okay with that? Mm -hmm. Never smoker? Next, we're going to add a state called current smoker. Current smoker. Are we okay with that? And finally, we're going to add a state called former smoker. Hmm? Generally, I try to make them line up. Now, you've noticed that I, you may have noticed I, I, have a deliberate naming convention for for quantities in the model. Um, for states, I use capital letters uh, to start them. For transitions, I use lowercase letters. And for the names of quantities in the model, constructs in the model, I use a lowercase um, to start them, like smoking state chart or heart disease state chart. It, regardless of, I'm not saying those are in any way privileged as conventions, but it's good to, to try to be consistent so that you can anticipate what you will have named it and, and you can remember easily what, what it was. Um, okay, so um, here we have these states. What do we have to do to fill this out? Remember, a state chart encodes, um, it characterizes the possible states you can be with respect to this concern, in this case, smoking. And it specifies the actions that can change those and the rules that govern those actions. So what do we need to add to this for it to be anywhere near complete? 
for it to be plausible at all. We need to add what? Begins with T. Transitions, thank you. Okay, so we're going to add a transition, and it's going to be called initiation. Okay, notice that when I drag that in, I just want to illustrate this here. When I drag it in, I I dragged it so it it turns green uh, at its source again. You may recall me being careful about that before. And then I drag this down to where once it goes or whither it goes, I should say. Um, make sure it's green on both sides. Okay, and I'm going to call this initiation. Hey, come on. Um, so it's going to be called initiation. And I'm going to show the name here. Okay. And it's going to be governed uh, by a rate. Okay. Um, and uh, this initiation rate is going to be 0.075. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to make that um, 0 0.0.05 okay, per year. Now, in fact, it'll be changing a lot over the life course by the age of the person. And we'll be able to capture that. If, if people are interested, we could, not today, but we'll, we could readily expand this to change that rate as people age. Uh, common, common need. But for now, I'm going to have this um, at a rate of 0 0.05 per year. And then beyond initiation, um, tell me, is there is there a um, transition uh, from current smoker to former smoker? Do people ever, and, and what do we call that informally? Quitting, quitting, quitting smoking. Uh, a more formal name for it is cessation, and, and that's the one I'll prefer here, cessation, but um, we'll call it Quitting. So here we go. Um, uh, cessation. So I just did the same thing. I dragged in the transition. And uh, this is going to be a cessation rate of, and here I'm gonna I'm gonna do something that will test your intuitions and appreciations. I'm gonna give it a value of 4.0 per year. Now you can I can forgive you for being confused by this. I can I can readily understand why you might be confused because I've been glibly describing this. Sort of waving my hands and saying, well, a value 0. 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.0.0.1 means like 10% chance per year. What does 4.0 per year mean? It's not a probability per year. No, 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 no. It's a probability density. It's a temporal probability density. It's a, it's not a probability, it's a probability per year. What does 4.0 mean? What, what in, in intuitive terms, what would it mean for that to be 4.0? Average person quits after three months. Average person quits after a quarter of a year or three months. That's right. Because the mean time would be one over alpha, and alpha here is four. Um, and, you know, they somehow magically went back to that state after quitting, they quit on average four times a year. 4.0, but they, they quit an average less than a year. 1.0 would be, it, it doesn't, 1.0 doesn't mean they immediately quit or something. It means that they quit on average within one year. If we're 2.0, they quit on average within how long? Six months. Six months. If it's 4.0, they quit on average within three months, one quarter of a year. Um. Okay, um, and, and clearly the literature is supportive of many quit attempts. It's 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 kind of a of, of a sad thing, actually. Um, a lot of people do try to quit. Um uh and unfortunately it's it's hard. And to reflect that, we're going to have well, you tell me, is there ever a transition back from former smoker to current smoker? And unfortunately, the answer is yes. Technically, it's known as relapse. Um and we're going to drag that in. You notice what I did there. I, I did something a bit odd, perhaps you might think. I put it down here just to get it attached. And then I 
I sort of wrangled it to, to go up here. There we go. Okay. And it's going to be a rate transition of, and uh, we're going to set this to be the relapse rate of six times per year, six point out, or they leave on average in one six of a year or two months. Um, um, so the temptation to fall back is, is pretty darn high. Now, you could be, again, reasonable in criticizing this theory because, in fact, the chance of relapse depends a lot on how long you've been quick. Your chance of falling back in the next year is very different if you've been quit for, well, excuse me, the chance of falling back in the next week is a lot different if you just quit yesterday versus if you quit 10 years ago. The chance of falling back per week, per week chance of falling back is much higher if you just quit than if you quit 10 years ago. Um, and there's physiologic reasons for that uh, as well as psychological reasons, but but in any case, we're going to make it 6.0 per year for now. And we could, again, readily capture with an age-based model in a way that would not be uh, at all readily achievable in a compartmental model. In an aggregate model, we could capture that time-varying chance of falling back. In short, it wouldn't be a memoryless process anymore. It wouldn't be memoryless. Your chance of falling back in a smoking would go down over time, depending on how long you've been quit. Very readily achievable. We're not going to go there yet. Okay. Um, so tell me, there's this bi-directional thing with quitting and falling back. And, and let's let's give them, make sure they have names, right? So this one is cessation, and let's make it sure it shows the name. There we go. And this one is, is uh, called uh, relapse, and make sure you show that name too. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Okay. Any any um I'm sorry, I I've, I've 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 lapsed here. Any questions from the remote people? Any help needed remotely? I, I apologize. I I uh failed to to attend to that group uh closely here. Are we okay online? Anyone give a signal? Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, uh Jiwon. Okay, so you see this bi-directional nature of these, inter these interactions, these connections between current smoker and former smoker. Riddle me this, is there a transition from current smoker to never smoker in the opposite direction? No, why not? Because never smoker is never, never smoker, right? Um, so there's a, a natural structure here that's that, that imposes some logical constraints on the behavior of this model. You can't go back and be a, a never smoker. Um, the, the logical structure has and imposes dynamic consequences. Structure determines behavior. Okay. Now, now we could run this model and we would see behaviors. Um, uh, and let's do that. Let's do that. So first of all, I want to show you a button of significance. I want to show you a button that that is your friend, even though sometimes it may tell you difficult things, like any good friend. There's a button that is called the build button <laughs> up here. Okay, build. Um, it's up here next to the run button, and it has ones and zeros on it. I'd like you to build this model. Now, if you had multiple models open, you want to be careful which one is, is selected. But if you build, if it's successful, it'll say build completed successfully. Do you see that? Anyone need help? Anyone's build not working? The TAs yearn to help. They stand ready for deployment. Okay? Okay. Um, it's good if their talents are exercised. Okay, so let's run it. If it built, let us let us engage in running behavior. Okay, so right click on baseline and run. What do you think we'll see? What do you think we'll see now? 
Well, exactly, exactly. <laughs> if we go and we drill down, let's go drill down to the level of a person. What will we see happen? Well, here's someone, what state are they in? Okay, what's going on with them? Uh, the cycles of smoking, right? Current smoker, former smoker, back and forth, right? Um, and unfortunately, by the time they're in their 20s, most people are, are currently former smokers. Here, someone remains and never smoke. Okay, so we see this, but just as Jarrett said, we we don't see the manifestations visually of that except by drilling down. But you folks know how to do that now. Now this is kind of old hat, right? Like you've already done it for 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 heart disease status, made it had a have a visual impact. So you're going to tell me, what can I do if I want to have them have a have the change the fill color of that oval according to their smoking status? What could I do? We did it for heart disease, and I'm arguing that a, a similar pattern can be applied to achieve this for smoking sense. Can anyone suggest it? Okay, Bill Collins. Yeah, but what do, what do we have to change it to? We need to, we need some, we need to define a variable to communicate what the color associated with my what state, my Ends with S. Okay. Smoking state. I need to communicate it to the open. Right? So we need a variable, right? Okay, we're going to call that variable. We can, in fact, co copy this one. That's a good trick. Um, so I can do it here with putting control, clicking, and dragging, and letting go. And it will actually create a copy of that variable. Kind of slick. Wade, how do you do that on a Mac? Command drag. Command drag. Okay. Um, and so I'll call this fill color. Okay. Fill color. And initially be black. And how will we where will we what do we still need to do with this variable? There's two broad sets of things we need to do with this variable. You tell me. Sorry? We need to type uh, put its type, its type, its color spelled according to dictates the American Imperial. So what else do we need to do? So update the shape. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, we need to update the shape. We need to, so that's a key thing, Jared. Exactly, on, on target again. Okay, so for the fill color, we're gonna change it to be variable. And what are we gonna put in here? Fill color. With Again, if, if you want to, you can have it. If you don't want it, that's fine. Okay, no fighting here over use. Okay, fill color. And if you don't want to type it, if you want to ensure you, you do it correctly, you could say fill color, blah, blah, blah. And there we go. Okay, but if we ran it now, what would happen? We've just added this mechanism in the form of this variable and hitched it up to the fill color. Yeah, we gotta we gotta set it in the state so it changes across the states, right? Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so you folks are thinking like model builders here. Okay, we need the mechanisms. We need to put in place the computational mechanisms to capture the behavior that's desired. In this case, it's just output behavior. It's just epiphenomenal. It's not shaping the evolution of the model, but it's it's telling us about that evolution. It's manifesting it. So let's go to Never Smoker. And we're going to set in the entry action to Never Smoker, when we enter that, we're going to set fill color to be green. The fill color to be Maybe we'll make it a different green, though. Maybe we'll make it. What's a different green besides like that bright lime green? Dark green? Olive. Olive. OK, let's make it olive. Um, so the entry action, what do I need to do? What do I need to type here? 
How do I? How do I say? Bill Collar, the Olive. What do I need to type? Good. Bill Collar equals Olive. That's a great start. And then what do I need? It's a command, an invocation. This is an imperative. I need a semicolon. Okay. Are you okay with that? Yeah, good, good, good. So we'll change this to uh, Olive. Help me. Help me, folks. What's Olive? Olive? Oh. Uh, beautiful. Good man, Jerry. Good man. Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So entry action. I'm, I'm going to copy this again. You can uh, you know select it and do right copy if you want. I'm going to go to current smoker. I'm going to set this to be um, a different shade of red. What's a different shade of red? Crim crimson. I I don't know what what. Help me, folks. Brick brick red. Okay. So let's let's paste this in and let's let's see what what it's got. Brick. Brick red, fire brick. <laughs> oh, fire brick. Okay, I'm gonna do fire brick. Okay, that sounds 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 exciting. Okay, um, the fill color will be uh, fire brick. Fire brick. Um, um, fire brick. Oh, here we are. We are. Notice it's case sensitive. Okay. And then former smoker, I'm going to make, um, I'm just going to make it gray uh, or silver, I guess. Okay. To my, this is gray, I guess. Gray. Okay. Um, and, and I'm going to make it gray. Gray. There, there we go. In all cases, we have a semicolon because we're saying, do this, do this, make this happen. Are we okay with that? Notice that no semicolon was involved here. Like when we gave this 0.05, we don't put a semicolon because we're not telling it to do something. We're giving it a value. Even if we had a calculation, one divided by 20.0, we wouldn't put a semicolon because we're not telling it change something. Change this that semicolon is because it's an imperative. That's a command. It's what's called a statement in Java compared to what's called an expression or what we might informally call a form. Okay, so if we run this model, what will we see? Can anyone riddle me this? What will we see? What spectacle will play out before our eyes? Hmm. What what will we see visually? Well, I hear no speculation, so I'll run it. Okay, so you tell me. Help me parse what's going on. We have, uh, early in the model, we're about, how far in? Um, we're about four, just short of five years in. Um, most, most of the, um, most of the, uh, of the circles are, are, Olive in color. The internals are olive. What is that telling us? They're they're what's that tells us that they're what is what? Never smoke. Um by contrast, this one is if one might say what color? Brick red. Right? What is that telling us? They're a current smoker. By contrast, this is this has a olive interior but a red boundary what is that telling us they have heart disease so so we could go to this healthy heart maybe but per nona's in, injunction per nona's admonition um let's let's make this uh this one green in accordance with its 
outside circle. We just have to remember it's its outside circle. And this one red. Okay. Um, so this one is someone who has developed heart disease. They're in this state uh, for the for the heart disease state chart, uh, but they're in all of state for the, they're never smoker. Um, this is someone who's a current smoker, but remains uh, uh, without heart disease, um, and so on. Time time is going on though. Time passes, and you see more and more people starting to smoke, hence the brick red. You see more and more people starting to develop heart disease, hence the the circle around them. But you tell me right now, is there any impact of smoking on heart disease? This moment? None whatsoever. These live in solitudes. They're independent. They're completely orthogonal. They're completely separate. Do you appreciate that? By appreciate, I don't mean do you like that. I mean, do you do you understand that? Do you recognize that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So we're going to, to finish the task. But first, I'm going to save this as version two, and I'm going to post it in Wade's presence, no less, um, because I need to consult with him on that matter which distressed me previously. Okay? Uh, so, Wade, I, I seek your counsel now. Um, so... I'm in uh, Google Drive and I want to post this model that I built, which lives in my models folder. Yeah. So wait, if I go and I do a file upload, surely there's a way to get to my models folder lickety split, it, you know, in a jiffy here, really quick. I, are you trying to show something on the screen? I... Oh, so I'm sorry, here. Surely there's a way to get to it from here. That's that's quick. I went and I looked under home. I thought it would models would be under that. I don't see it. I think it's under documents. No, okay. I, I look. I went under documents. Yeah. 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 No, I know I can get to it this way, but that's brutal. Yeah. <laughs> like what you can do. Yes. Yeah. Once you have, like, once you find it, yeah, um, you can right-click it and, and have it and in- Bookmark it? Yeah, have it as quick access. Okay. Um, so I don't need to go to, like, Riot Games or no. something, do I? Okay. Okay. If, um, if I think if we just click this okay. side arrow, it will, like, give you your options. Like this one? Yeah. Oh! And then- Okay. Uh, mumble. Um, Nate Osgood. Um, <laughs> Well, thank you and very much. Oh, oh, okay. That that ain't too obnoxious. Okay. But, but surely there's a better way. What we can do is from the folder, we yeah. can uh, like right click it and then have it in yeah. quick access. No, no, I, I understand that. Um, I, I will say um, life is simpler on Linux, um, but I'll hold my remarks. Um, okay. Um, uh-huh uh-huh okay that's that's very helpful okay i just i just posted that it's I, I so appreciate larissa's help and that that's i think my recourse it that's less brutal it, it involves fewer keystrokes and clicks okay so we've done this can we now join them up is that okay would people like a break before we do that do people need a break or will 15 minutes would you like to finish the job in 15 minutes? Yeah? Yeah. Do people want to take that break? Or can we finish the job? Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so we're going to finish this task. We're not finishing everything. Um, okay. Okay, great. So we're going to join these together. Mm -mm. We've got all the ingredients. Little do you know. We need to make this hazard rate of going from developing heart disease, developing a, developing heart disease from a healthy heart. We want to make that depend on, be, be different by what smoking status 
by, by your current smoking status. Let's 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 start there. We want those with a current who are currently smokers to have a higher rate of developing heart disease. So while you're a current smoker, you're going to have an elevated chance of developing heart disease per year. And let's say for a former smoker or for a never smoker, it'll be low. For a current smoker, it'll be really high and former smoke could be somewhere in between. While you're in that state, I want to, I want a certain chance per year of developing heart disease to obtain, to apply. How can I do that? How can I make, how can I encode what state I'm in or the, the heart disease rate to apply in that state while well, I change smoking status states and, and have the heart disease state chart know about that. I could use a quantity that communicates about things that are changing, that are varying. What would that be? Or I could use a what? A variable. I could use a variable. Okay, may we do this? Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is, is fall back to our simple pattern. We've used it twice now, and soon it'll be thrice. Mm -hmm. So we've done, we've encoded information based on what state, in, in the state in which we're located in boundary color for the heart disease state chart. When we transition the smoking state chart, we've encoded that information uh, current state as it impacts things visually to the fill color. We're going to do something similar. We're going to create a variable. And this variable is going to be a variable that encodes a heart disease hazard rate. So where, what did I do? I went, I'm, I'm, I'm in person. You've got to be careful where you're at, where you're currently located. We want to go to the agent and we see here a variable. We're gonna drag it in and it's called variable. And we wanna set this to be called heart disease hazard rate. And the type of this variable, tell me, is it, is it a count like an int? Is it a color? What sort of thing is it? Well, it turns out it's a double. It, it really is. It, it's, it's like a, a decimal quantity, like a real value, a number of value. And we're going to set it by default to be 0.01, okay. by default. But critically, the value of this variable will depend on our what? Be gone, depend on our smoking state. Well, have a higher heart disease hazard rate when we're in a current smoking state compared to a never smoking state. And in fact, even compared to a former. Okay, so we're gonna go to never smoker. Mm -hmm. And well, okay, first, yeah, sure. We'll, we'll do it in this order. Okay, so in the never smoker state, we wanna set that variable to be a low value, say 0 0.005. How would I do that? What, what do I do? What do I need to do to set that variable heart disease hazard rate to be that 0 0.005? What do I need to talk? You tell me. At the phrase heart disease hazard rate equals that value after that percentage. Great. Great. So heart, heart, and remember, autocomplete is your friend. Heart disease hazard rate. There it is. It stands before us. And I'm going to press enter. Heart disease hazard rate equals 0 0.05. And, oh, sorry, 0 0.005. Not, not 0 0.05. 0 0.005. Half a percent per year. So a much longer time to develop heart disease. And what do I need after it? Semicolon, because it's a command. We're saying, do this. Set this thing. And it says, yes, ma'am, and sets it. Okay? Okay. Are we okay with that? Are we okay? Okay, hearing no objections. Um, okay, next, I'm going to copy this. 
And the same basic pattern only to occur for current smokers. Suppose for current smoker, we want the heart disease hazard rate to be 0 0.04. What do we need to do? You tell me what to type. Okay. 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 That's a good start. Okay. I'm going to, you know what it is. You know the shtick, right? Okay. So this equals 0 0.04. Do we need a semicolon? Darn, darn right. We need one. Okay. Performer smoker. What are we going to do? Okay. Come on. Okay. Um, and we're going to set it to 0 0.01. That happens to be it's still falling. Okay. So that's the heart disease hazard rate for the, whilst we're in each of these states in turn, there will be a change to our hazard rate of developing heart disease. While we're in the current smoker state, on a per year basis, we'll have a higher chance of developing heart disease than if we're in a never smoker state or in a former smoker state. Are we okay with that for now? Okay, but this is called heart disease hazard rate, but is it really right now? operationalized? Is it, in fact, implemented? Is it realized as the heart disease hazard rate? The answer, as, as manifested by many of the heads, is no, is nay, is a negatory, as my first doctoral student used to say. Okay, so what do we need to do to, in fact, operationalize it, make it, in fact, realize it as the heart disease hazard rate in the model. What do we need to do? You tell me, where do we need to go? Transition. We go to this transition and set a 0 0.01, what do we put? Heart disease hazard rate, there we go. Heart disease hazard rate. And autocomplete is your point. Are we okay with that? Okay, TAs, stand at ready. Okay, and I will go, how do I make sure the model is happy? Or at least thinks I'm, it knows what I mean. How do I check that? Build. Ladies and gentlemen, take it from an old man. Build early, build often. Hmm? Okay. So we built, and now inspired by the fact that it had reported no problems in building of a run it just because it builds properly doesn't mean it's correct but it means it thinks it knows what we mean there's no grammatical errors in what we've told it it's not confused as all get out by what we've told it to do but what we told it to do may not be what we want it to do in fact um because there might be problems in our thinking so we're going to run the baseline scenario what might we see now that's different? What would you expect to see that we didn't used to see? Anyone? Those that are current smoker have a higher chance of developing heart disease. And in fact, uh, we see it writ large on in front of us. Where do we see that? Anyone? What telltale sign is there? Green on green. Green on, well, okay, there's a lot of green on greens, but there's also a lot of what? Red on reds, right? Remember, red outer boundary means heart disease. Yeah, brick red internal means that there's current smoker, and there's a lot of current smokers with heart disease here. That's a bit anecdotal visually. Collect that information easily above. But um, I think we've done well. Um, tomorrow, we'll be covering how to go through the details of this, um, uh, of, of uh, encoding, collecting information, and presenting it in those sort of plots, like what we saw uh, earlier, uh, those plots involving um, the uh, you know, summaries of model state. But you've done well, ladies and gentlemen. You've, you've put into place uh, a model which at once captures heart disease, 
captures smoking and captures, nay, the interaction between them. Um, and, uh, and you've built up things out of the basics of any logic um, between these um, to capture that interaction. And you see the effects of that writ large here um, with these patterns. Tomorrow we'll see how to collect that information more for. Okay. Um, so we've come a long way. Built up a model, set it going, seen the role of parameters, have multiple state charts, seen ways to capture information between state charts, these ways of putting in place visualizations. You can run a model with populations large and populations small. We've seen the role of the palette, the canvas, the problem we've seen uh, the use of the properties window. Seen how we can distribute people in space. Seen how to give people dynamics. How to capture differences in assumptions, as specified by scenarios. And indeed, as we'll see, that will carry over to specifying differences between. So I think you've done well today. I, I admire the stalwart character of, of those here. And my temptation is, with four o'clock being upon us, um, to, to, to declare us uh, beyond the lectures of the day, which went to this point. We could always press on, um, but we have a case study that instead we should, uh, we should consider offering. And I want some guidance. It's four o'clock. Um, we could go now for the case study. It will probably go beyond 4.30. Um, this is on participatory group model building. Or we could preserve, reserve that for tomorrow morning. I need a show of hands. Um, we're done with the, uh, the interactive work for today, and I'll be posting this model. But would people be interested in hearing a uh, talk from Jenna uh, today on uh, group model building, or do we want to reserve it for tomorrow? Can anyone express uh, uh, preferences here? What do people think? Mm -hmm. We good tomorrow morning? It is like a good hour of content that I can have. Mm -hmm. I can always condense it if we do want to do it this for three days. Uh, but I'll definitely have to take some out. So if we want the full thing, mm -hmm. okay. Um, okay. Um, others. I'm looking for guidance from online. So we heard one vote for Duguid tomorrow morning. Okay, great, great. I think we also have lost a couple online, maybe for tomorrow o'clock. And mm. um, that sounds good. I, I will say that my throat will not object. Um. Uh, so um, I think um, the eyes have it, and we'll break for the day, and we'll resume with that after a retrospective uh, and questions and discussion tomorrow morning. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, I will post this latest version of the model, and <laughs> we'll resume tomorrow morning with that uh, case study um, discussion. and. Uh, a new set of materials on all building, as well as principles um, associated with models. Uh, we'll soon be looking at, at things like capturing outputs for models in terms of capturing spatial location and networks, uh, et cetera, within our models and inducing agent heterogeneity. But we're off to a good start, thanks to your uh, stalwart character. Okay, we will uh, now break uh, for the evening and I will rest. Thank you.